that, that car, what is it? It's cool. America. Volvo Graveyard Adventures. Here we have a 91 740. Took a pretty hard hit in the back. I'm always fascinated to see how these hold up on their damage. Kept the passenger safe. I found these notes on this 240. They're hilarious. Because they fit the car really, really well. Still nothing to do. Just very bored. Waiting. Dot, 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 dot. 20 years later. No adventures once, so ever. LOL. Except when I jumped off the cliff. Just kidding. Dun, 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 dun. So if you've been watching my channel and been following closely in the comments, you'll know exactly what's in this bag. The hydras. One of them is cracked and bent, and the other one's just bent. So here I have fancy new wheels I got on Craigslist. A more uncommon wheel. The Gemini. Oh, that's lovely. So for just a little bit of time, while I can get my situation sorted out with uh, either finding replacement hydras or not, I'm going to be running gems in the back, hydras in the front. This wheel is a 16 by 7. These are 16 by 6.5. Not much of a difference. Yeah, the tire would look a little straighter on this and a little bulgier on that, but really what's half an inch. Well, we're going to chop some springs. See this turbo? I got this turbo yesterday for free 99. It was a uh, junkyard stuff. The the 16T came off of a T5 with a blown head gasket and it was a gross looking T5. However, it had some nice goodies on it like a IPD turbo control valve right there. Ooh. Couple of other things I needed. I got the injectors too. I bought those. And back to the spring situation. We are going to lob off two coils in the front, one and a half on the rear. That seems to be a really good ride height for these cars. Now I do have the front jacked up, so it's not really an accurate portrayal, but it typically does have this much clearance in the back. Um, first, I'm going to just do the fronts and then I'm going to install these wheels in the back make sure there isn't any rubbing or clearance issues when it's compressed. We're going to cut the springs and the bump stops. Uh, you'll notice on your bump stop this little guy, the bellows, hmm, not my name, but sometimes. They attach to the bottom here and this bolts in on the top if I remember correctly. So. When you're cutting these, you basically will have to get rid of this. Well, you might have already guessed it. I'm going to fit these guys over. I might have to cut one and do it in half. But it's going to fit somewhere maybe right there or so. So I'm going to cut this off. So maybe it'll fit right here. Yeah, right there. When I cut here and put my bellow there. A zip tie, a little bit of stretching, some massaging. It'll be great. We'll make America great again, people. That's just a joke. Uh, no one person can do that. All right. I'm so excited. Yeah, and my shock's coming today. I've been waiting a whole week for this. <laughs> it looks really goofy, but I thought I'd at least try it. The only caps that fit on these Gemini, since they have a thread-in kind of style cap, are the, I think they're called Coronas. I'm not positive. Multi-spoke GL wheels from the you know, 80s. 240 cars and they might have come on something else so I might just run them without caps because that's a joke
And the other Volvo caps from the newer cars, um, like this here, a little too wide. Okay, my shocks are here. Monroe Sense a Track. Now with safety tech system. And from the look of the box, these shocks came out in like the mid 2000s. So this box is probably 10 years old. No dates on it. it comes with a new nut. Uh, I don't know what you would call that, but it goes to the strut tube lock. And the sense of track. Very cool. Now it's a gas pressurized unit. All right, because all those hydraulic shocks are old news. So it is compressed currently, so I'm going to twist that and it will uncompress. And uh, there's a nice little diagram of the valving inside, how it all works. Let's, let's go through it real quick. There's a reason this was like $10 cheaper than everyone else. Okay, how does it work? Normal driving. The piston is in the comfort zone. Fluid fl flows freely. Fluid flows free. That's hard to get through. Fluid flows freely. Okay. The result is a smooth and comfortable ride. Great. Number two, demanding driving. The piston is in the control zone. Fluid is directed through the piston. Ooh. Uh, result, added control. <laughs> I mean, for stupid people, sure, but come on. You can explain it a little bit better than that. Anywho, let's put these bad boys in. Let's cut some coils. Drop it, put my wheels on. I just cleaned them, they're so beautiful. Yeah, clean wheels, I love it. Here we got our spring. And I'm gonna clarify something that I found online. A lot of people say, cut two coils, but I'm like, hey, does that count? That bottom coil, you know, the flat one? Yes, okay, so in short, there's the top. I leave that little piece on there so I know where the top is. And you just start right here, instead of starting at, somewhere else like there i was kind of confused about that no one really specified but looking at pictures where they say i cut two coils off and then they show the cut piece i can deduce one two sort of like that essentially one coil two my cut is going to be right here great My zombie slaying weapon of choice is the angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. All right, don't forget safety first. You got your earplugs, you got your safety glasses. Keep a fire extinguisher handy. Let's see here. All right. One coil, two coils. Let's hit it. Looks like it's just shy of two coils actually, but when you line them up, it's pretty good. One last time, just because I'm always second guessing myself. And a one a coil, and a two a coil. Great. So that should give us a pretty decent height. A lot of people like this two coil cutoff, so I'm really excited. No idea what to do with that, though. <laughs> Throw it away, I guess. Okie dokie, I know we kind of skipped ahead here. And it's frustrating when you're watching a video and somebody just jumps ahead and, Hey, look, it's done! But I'm going to show you on the other side, I hope, <laughs> a little more. Um, every 30 minutes I've, I've set a timer because I'm putting coats of Plasti Dip on the lip. It's going to go back on the front. Right there. So, from this angle, fender looks... Much better. Okay. This bellow was a little fun to slip over. Um, all right, first thing I did is I put the shock in here. I tightened that nut. Where's the other? Here it is. Um, as tight as you can get it by hand. It's hard, especially with things out of the car because it's spinning a lot. So I, you know, put a foot down here and there. 
and then I'm putting my foot down. I use this dead blow to do the final tightening of it. And you can tell because it stops wiggling in there and it starts getting real snug. So I couldn't find anything in the book about torque specs on that. And then I next thing I did was I put the the bellow on the I love saying that. Uh the David bellow on the bump stop, which was cut. And there's the other half of it there. Slipped it over both sides, made sure that it was enough with the compression, the full compression, for it to uh have plenty of space for it to work out. Not that I ever plan on fully compressing this. And then I put the spring compressors on. I put one here and here, and the other one was like here and here or something like that. In such a way that they're not in the way, because when you have them on, you know, if you, you've you got to be able to loosen it, so you want to be able to clear that, and you don't want it at the bottom, because that's where your spring is going to sit, and neither at the top. Neither. So you've got that, and then you put on your top mount, make sure that it lines up right there and then you put this guy in with spins freely i don't know if that uh wobble there is uh just because it's kind of pitched forward we'll see uh, what's important is that it spins freely and then once you stick the nut in there you're going to tighten it down of course it's going to spin the rod on the shock and I'm actually kind of disappointed on a side note in these shock absorbers because you can compress them by hand fairly easy. Huh. Anyways, uh, removing those two coils does actually help a lot with the spring because it's a lot looser and because it's shorter and it doesn't need to be so tight and scary. So it didn't take much to get this on. And then uh, once uh, I, I try to put my hand in here to hold that rod from spinning while tightening it that nut with my impact and lo and behold it worked you can tell when you're really tight because of course the impact will stop it's only rated at like 100 something foot pounds uh not that i tightened it that much but you'll feel it when it stops and the bump stop will stop spinning because it's wedged in there real good cool now the next very 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 important thing the spring in here can jump out of there and unwind itself and poke your tire. When I say unwind itself, it means it jumps out and then it just spins a little bit enough so that it's sticking out at a weird angle, pops your tire. A way to fix that, you got a drain hole here, a drain hole here, and you're going to put a clamp, a hose clamp here and one here. People have used steel cables and air airline aircraft ties, things like that aircraft cable, um, just it's important for you to do that. Also, you want to seat the spring into the little divot. I'll dyno know the proper wood, but it's going to go right there. All right. Um, since I have this one here, I might also utilize a smaller clamp there. I'm basically going to clamp the ish out of it, make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. Of course, the, the bellow got dirty, but I'm not here to make a beautiful suspension. I mean, I, I did like touch up the paint on the bare metal because the salt eroded away quite a bit of paint. Just one day of salting these roads and it did all that. The wheels are dry, Arthur's dusty, mom's car needs a wash, and shocks are soft. Let's move on to the other side after I don't know, go put another layer of paint on that lip. In the words of that one guy who uh, can't seem to get out of South African movies, that's what I'm talking about. Tight, tight clamps. Could barely even fit the zip tie. I had to pry the spring out a little bit. So, there you have it, folks. All right, the front's sitting at a pretty good height. There's a uh, one finger gap right now. That's probably, we'll see how that changes as I drive the car, let those springs settle in. The back, of course, does have a two finger gap or so. I haven't cut the springs yet. I did just, flush out all the brake fluid. You can use dot three, even though it says dot four only. So dot three or dot four is good. And I'm trying to find the other missing caps for these wheels that aren't broken on the back so I can stick them on here. Otherwise, oil change is ready. Uh, biggest inconvenience at the moment is having to 
share a battery with Arthur. We have to move Arthur over and then wiggle this wagon out of the way. So it's going well. Uh, gotta rush, gotta make some dog food, but uh, making sure I'm not <laughs> leaving my lug nuts loose like I did last time with Arthur. Scary. And the good news is, the only thing I lost in the last week and a half, two weeks, is the cap on the other side. So, I'm sure it'll turn up. One last thing to mention was the fluid coloring. Not a lot of fluid for the whole system to flush, but definitely ugly. Really overdue. Hydraulic fluid is also great at stripping paint. If you were ever curious to find out the hard way. I just saved you a lot of trouble, and be careful. Oh man, it's cold outside. I'm without shoes. Okay, so I gotta wrap this up. Um, the car handles a world of difference better. It's like night and day. I wish I had rear center caps. I still need to get that panel on there. I need to cut the rear springs. I need to fix the sensor for the temperature gauge, you know, bypass that whole compensator unit. I also need to get another speedometer gear, but in terms of responsive, responsiveness and drivability it's incredible the front shocks are a little soft i can compress them by hand a lot easier than other shocks that i've compressed by hand and um, i really missed having a subwoofer and it's been really good those ball joints i blame for much of the issue along with the shock absorbers just being completely blown out in the front so i'm loving it Thanks for watching. I'm going back inside. Good night.